Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's uh, April 2nd edition, 2024, of the Chiefs Digest Live Q&A. I saw the first comment was from Luttrell when I got in here, and, and that just warmed my heart. So thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. Um, hopefully we'll live up to expectations tonight. Starting at 7.02, so, you know, that's got to be pretty exciting. And polls are closed in Kansas City, Missouri, and Jackson County. Um, voting on the stadium question for the three eighths in sales tax that would go toward funding the new Royal Stadium in downtown Kansas City and funding the reimagined Arrowhead uh, at Arrowhead Stadium at the Jackson's County Sports Complex. Uh, I don't know if our special guest, Nick Jacobs, when he comes in later, will stick around to the bitter end, but. Um, I am at least at this time, barring, you know, catastrophes of some sort, sticking around till we get some election results tonight, maybe of hopefully the final. Um, for those of you, I, I, I used to, in my public relations days, have to work a lot of election nights. Um, so I know a lot about the, the situations in Kansas City and Jackson County. Um, for those of you who do not know, and I imagine those of you who vote in Jackson County do know this, um, and there are two election boards in, in this area, one for Kansas City that's a portion of Kansas City that is not, um, that's actually in the city of Kansas City, and the rest of it is the Jackson County Election Board, which is everything that is not in Kansas City. And it's, I, I don't know what we'll be able to tell a lot. The last time I went back and looked at the election results from 2006, um, and, and there was a minor variation. Um, the, the voters in Kansas City, Missouri portion of the county um, voted to approve the stadium at a little bit higher rate than Jackson County did. It was about a two point difference. So the residents outside Kansas City, Missouri, out in Jackson County, which, you know, for those of you maybe not in Jackson County, don't know the area as much, the suburbs, Blue Springs on the, the Lee Summit, Independence, um, what we all call Eastern Jack, and then also the southern portion of the county. Um, Grandview would be out there, Belton, uh, those kind of communities. Um, that portion, I mean, there was about a two-point difference. So uh, one thing I will say when we start getting early results in, normally Jackson County reports results a little bit faster. Uh, we will see with the uh, apparent hacking attack in, in Kansas City, Missouri, and Jackson County tonight, today, that um, with the, in Kansas, with the Jackson County services, if that's going to affect anything. Um, all reports have been that the, the, the election sites have been more secure. Those are usually on a separate network than the rest of the county. So um, we will see if that plays any impact in getting election results tonight and what we find out. But I will say once the results are coming in, what I'm looking for, I mean, obviously it will be um, plus or minus, which, you know, what the margin is. I think this is going to be a close election. The polls that were done on this all indicate a very close election. And, and like I pointed to, the 2006 election was 53-47 in favor of the sales tax. So I'm not expecting a whole lot different tonight. If anything, I think it may be even closer. We will see. Um, but the things that I'm going to be looking for in the results that we get, uh, one is going to be the number coming out of Kansas City, Missouri. If if it's at least that same number, if it's at least 53, 54%, that in favor, that's a good sign for the sales tax. Um, in Jackson County, I mean, it needs to be simple majority. And um, yeah, like Casey Harold, yeah, for this the tail tax, it is just a simple majority. So 51% will get it done. Um, and 50% plus one rather. So it, it's, I, yeah, if they had to get a two thirds majority, there's no way that this thing is passing. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be a close race. So I'm going to be looking for the Kansas City, Missouri results. Also of note in the last 2006 election was that um, the turnout was much higher in Jackson County. So Jackson County's turnout in that election was 44 percent, 25 percent in Kansas City, Missouri. Other things can affect that. I know looking back at it, um, Kansas City, Missouri, I don't really think had anything else for the most part on the ballot. There may have been some other um county questions and city questions but um it was a 25 percent was an incredibly high turnout for an april election um but the 44 percent turnout in, in jackson county was very high so i'll be looking at turnout if the turnout in kansas city missouri 
is is higher, or at least that there was a 19 point swing between Jackson County and Kansas City, Missouri. Assuming that you know we can see some trends in this, and I, w- I would have a reason to believe that Kansas City, Missouri portion again would support this more than Jackson County. So I'm going to be looking to see if the turnout in Kansas City, Missouri is strong. Um, we'll be obviously looking at the rate. And, and I mean, if this comes in and we're starting to get, you know, support for this in the 40s, um, then it's going to be a tough night, I think, for the yes vote. But we will see. Um, I, I'll have all the, my sites up and trying to refresh them while I'm answering your questions and everything. Maybe uh, once Nick gets in here, I can start doing that while uh, <laughs> he's answering some of your questions. Um but yeah, um, yeah, Casey, yeah, simple majority. So um, it will it, it will be a close race. Um, I, 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 my gut is saying that I think that the yes vote will pass. I would not have put any money on that though. I'm not um, sure. I'm 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 super confident it's going to pass. I think it's going to be incredibly close. I'll be surprised if it's a landslide one way or the other, but. Um, regardless, I mean, this is going to have a huge impact uh, going forward. If this, if this measure wins, then at least there's a plan in place. I am not 100% convinced that the Chiefs plan is 100% in place. I think there's a lot of placeholders in their Chiefs plan, and there's a good three years before they're going to be starting any construction because they're going to have to wait for the Royals to get out of the way. And right now, the tentative date would be for the Royals to open and move in 2028. So there's a lot of time for the Chiefs to kind of figure out what they're going to do with this money and what and, and what their final renovations will look like. So if this fails, however, we're going to have a lot of talk. And um, I'm not certainly when it comes to the Chiefs, I'm not buying relocation outside the metro. I think that is absolutely ludicrous that there's any scenario that the Chiefs would either, one, want to move out of the Kansas City Metro, or two, that the NFL would let them move outside the Kansas City Metro. But where they go and where they'll be playing in the future, whether it's before 2031 or not, I mean, 2031 would be the season that their current lease runs out. So we will see what happens. Um, uh, Bumpa. When do you think the results will be announced for the results of the vote? Um, I mean, it will depend. I, I am assuming it'll probably be a couple hours. Um, the April election's not usually a huge turnout, so you, normally the votes can get counted pretty quickly. Under normal circumstances, Jackson County um, would be result, reporting results faster than Kansas City, Missouri would. Um, like I said, with the hacking, alleged hacking incident in the, in the county today, um, we'll see if that affects the reporting of the results in any way for them. Um, the Kansas City, Missouri, uh, usually a little bit later. And and we also have the advance vote um, this time around, which we did not have in 2006. So we should be able to get some early results from that and an indication about which way people were, th- were going on this. Um, and we will see. So we'll keep you up to date throughout the night on that. And otherwise, we do what we usually do and answer any questions that you got about the state of the Chiefs. Um, Nick Jacobs, our good friend, will be coming in later. So let's get started. Uh, not exactly a question, but Chiefs Kingdom, new backup quarterback, new slogan, <laughs> anything is possible. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to come up with something new for, for Carson Wentz. Um, can't say that I I was completely surprised by this. Um, the Chiefs were expressed an interest in Carson Wentz last year, and it's easy to understand why. Um, he's a West Coast system quarterback. He knows this offense. He's played in a variation and a version of it, played for Doug Peterson. So there is absolutely... Um, connective tissue there as far as, you know, Carson Wentz goes in this offense. So I think he should be able to pick things up extremely quickly. Um, I I don't think that the Chiefs would uh, be making this signing if they had any concerns whatsoever about him and um, his ability to to buy into what that they're doing and and to fit in with the system. So um, it makes a ton of sense to me. You know, Sam McDonald, the Kansas City Star, had a great story today about uh, Carson Wentz and his ability in short yardage situations and quarterback sneaks. There's no doubt. I mean, I think the Chiefs would probably have no problems putting Carson Wentz out there in a quarterback sneak situation, even if it's just to make the threat and the illusion of a quarterback sneak. So teams have to respect it and um, be honest with it. Um, I know I I can already hear people saying, why would you take Patrick Mahomes off the field at a fourth down situation at any time? But 
you know, uh, there's no doubt. I mean, Chiefs are never going to run court Patrick Mahomes in a sneak. They just don't want to expose him to it. So they'll, would they expose Carson Wentz? Absolutely. Uh, so if I'm sure there'll be some more Carson Wentz questions coming up later tonight and kind of want to get Nick's uh, impression on it as well, because I haven't even had a chance to talk to Nick about it. We talked about a few other things uh, today in the last couple of days, but not about that. Um, Bump, uh, the question I definitely expect tonight, some about Rasheed Rice in that situation. How much do you think Rasheed will be suspended for? Um, certainly way too early to tell. Um it's obviously it's an ugly situation. You don't want one of your players involved in anything like this. Don't think there's any doubt that uh, I think Rasheed will admit that he exercised some bad judgment in this situation. Um, one person I can say who never exercises any bad judgment is Nick Jacobs. Hi. Who's- <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> Come in immediately when the Rasheed Rice question pops up. Oh no! <laughs> Hold on. I uh, you do what you need to. I gotta stream this out to to the people. So um, I'll, no, I'll no. in a second. You always, nope. you know, I gotta. I have to go into the green room to do the streaming, but you always pop me up so quickly. You know, I I realize that's that's one of my. Now. It's one of my rookie moves as a producer. I, I generally, <laughs> I generally pop you in once you show up in the green room. I sh- I pop you into the live stream way too fast, and I think tonight was a record because I was just kind of a, a stopping point. I had a segue, so I took it. Look at um, you. But- but uh, and I was just starting to talk about it, so I'll finish the thought about Rashid. I mean, it's like I said, it's an ugly situation. I think he obviously, whatever the circumstances are, um, exercised some poor judgment. And I think he should absolutely acknowledge that once we hear from Rashid Rice directly. Um, but it is way too early in the investigation to know exactly what the facts are, what happened, what's involved. Um, the NFL is obviously aware of the situation, and uh, they, as usual, the NFL will wait until the the legal investigation proceeds. Proceedings are done. Um, Rashi obviously has retained counsel, so this will obviously not be something that's drawn, you know, comes to a conclusion immediately. And look at the other examples that the Chiefs have had, like the Frank Clark situation. I mean, that was a year after the the incident with Frank Clark before there was any suspension handed out. I will say, at least at this point, based on the in the initial um, information that we have. I mean, it is it, thank goodness that no one was seriously hurt in this incident. And that will definitely, um, help or she to a degree. We'll see if there's any extenuating circumstances, but right now, I mean, based on the charges that he potentially could face, I mean, a, I, I think at least the two game suspension would be merited. Um, are there extenuating circumstances that could make that longer and more like a four or six game and absolutely could, so we don't know. And we also know in situations like this that it's important for the player to be, and especially in Kansas City, completely honest with ownership and the coaching staff about what the situation is and their side of the story. So um, it's a long way to go. We don't know. But it's, it's certainly not a situation that anybody wanted to see happen. But now that it is, I think you just want to see it handled in the, the correct and responsible way. Everybody that was involved in it to be held accountable. And we'll see where the chips fall where they may. I mean, you know, it's hard to separate that from the football side of it to me, too. Chiefs have to deal with that and the business side of it, unfortunately. So does that mean that they would be more likely to look at some veteran insurance with, you know, possibility that Rashid could miss some time? Possibly. Does it affect their draft plans? I, I I can't I couldn't necessarily say that it would dramatically. I mean, unless there was some extenuating reason why they did not believe that Rasheed Rice would play this season, that it would change it. Um, but this is not the Tyreek Hill incident from 2019 when um, a story about Tyreek came out. You know, literally 24 hours before the Chiefs were on the clock. Um, that's not the same situation. So they've got more time to react and to deal with this. So I don't think it's going to affect their draft plans, but. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks. Nick, now that um, you've taken care of your housekeeping business for us to try and get more viewers. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here to do. Um, how much do you think? The, oh, I have no idea with Rice. I'm going to let that whole thing unfold. Like, I mean, I'm not going to jump into anything on that. Let them get their facts out there. Let them get all that stuff out there. So that's that's not in my wheelhouse right now. Nor do I want to be an expert in anything that I don't actually do professionally for a living involving uh, – you know, law enforcement or legal or anything of that nature. 
Um, it's just not not my wheelhouse. So I know where my lane is, and I stay in my specific um, path. So, but what I will say for the Chiefs, which I know it's going to get asked again and again, again, so I might as well just do it now. <clears throat> From a football perspective of it, since people were immediately asking that on Sunday, and I'm like, oh, let's just let's not today, okay? Season then starts in September. They got time to get it all figured out. Um, but like, you you just gotta. Whenever I said a while back that they needed to add veteran wide receivers, they still need to, regardless of the situation. Just like they still need to add draft picks to it because you need that position to be stabilized 100. percent And so, if I'm personally in Brett Veach's shoes. I'm still going out and getting two veterans and I'm still drafting two guys to add to this mix. And I may sign a couple undrafted free agents if I'm in his shoes just to get the best five to six receivers and then go from there. So whoever that ends up being is whoever that ends up being. But with, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with Rice's situation. Once all the facts and everything gets situated, the investigation gets handled and everything gets done that needs to. And then you go from there. But you don't really have the luxury of waiting on that stuff. You just got to go out and handle business and put together the best roster possible. And whether he is or isn't a part of it, you've just got to take that out of the equation uh, to a certain extent. Uh, I am going to interrupt this conversation a little bit to go over to the election results. We do have our first results coming in um, on the stadium votes from Jackson County. And based on the numbers that have come in, I would assume that this is um, early voting. 5,200 votes have come in in the first precinct. So that would indicate to me that it is the early vote that has been tallied. And right now, no is winning 56.47%. And I I will just say right now that is a bad sign for the the yes campaign. I mean, uh, it's possible. Hey, maybe we'll find out that the, the day of voting was stronger for the yes. But maybe the people who were really against the stadiums were more motivated to make sure that they got their vote in and got out early. Um, we didn't have really enough polling on this race, I think, to really make draw any conclusions. Um, but as I mentioned beforehand, I mean, if you compare this to the 2006 election, uh, that was a very, very close election. That was 53-47. Um, the Jackson County went about 52 percent in favor of that tax. Um, right now, that's they're trailing that, that by nine points. And when you're talking about a race that was that close, um, that's a bad proposition. So um, a lot of votes still to be counted. Uh, we have no votes counted yet in, in from Kansas City, Missouri as of yet. Um, we'll certainly get more from Jackson County coming in. But um, I'll be honest, I mean, even with the early vote, I thought that that margin might be a little closer, Nick. And um, if that stands up, I mean, that's then the no, the no vote would, would win this. And it's going to be back to square one for these two states, two teams going for their futures beyond 2030. Matt, I am not a political analyst. <laughs> I'm only football. Well, either I lost you or did. You should have me. It could be my microphone is out. I apologize, everybody, but I cannot hear Nick. We do hear you. Perhaps you can. Check, check, <laughs> check, one, two. Check, 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 one, two. I still can't hear Nick. I'm sorry, Nick. Well, I hear you perfectly fine. Let me look at settings. Look, anyway, in the comments, if you can hear Nick and it's not me, then you oh, Bump, Bumpa can hear both. So um, I guess, Nick, go ahead and I will see if I can't figure out why I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just going to say, like, I, I I, mean, we'll see how, again, it's other one of those things. I'll just wait and see what the results are at the end of the night. I know we get, they're doing a bunch on KSHB 41 my employer and uh we'll uh yeah I'll, I'll see where they are at the end of the night with the with the numbers on that i <laughs> found a solution to that this is um matt has too many windows open and accidentally muted the tab so um anybody who's ever heard me on on uh, locked on chiefs with ron tracy will know that's a common problem so whatever you said nick i'm sure it went for both of us I just said I'll, I'll wait and see with the election results at the end of the night and go from there. Man, you're just you're just sitting on the fence here, Nick. Come on. I mean, what am I like going to do said, with you? 
all my coworkers at KSHB, KSHB 41 are going to do a great job with covering all the election from around the city, and they that's part of their wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is football. So this I, is, again, this I, is, I, this I know is my past. St- Certainly what I miss about covering elections is uh, pizza in the newsroom on, on election nights. That's just, that's I, classic. Yeah, no, I, I, they probably will have some there. I don't know. I haven't looked at anybody's Twitter accounts to see, um, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll be there. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Sean. Sean is a new member here for, on, the, on the YouTube channel. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate your support. I know I uh, always appreciate your comments, too. It's great to see you uh, know active member. So thank you for joining. Um, Steeman Demon coming in. If the vote fails, San Antonio is a strong, viable alternative. I know that has been mentioned and there's been some rumors. I mean, there's always going to be rumors popping around on that. Um, I, don't, I don't know what your take is on it, Nick, but. I mean, I just can't see that being a plausible scenario. I mean, if one, San Antonio has the same problems. I mean, not playing in the Alamo Dome, they'd have to have a brand new stadium too. And I think the bigger problem is that I cannot see in a million years the NFL allowing a successful playoff winning franchise that sells out every single game with the franchise player of the league moving to an unknown market like that. And, you know, and honestly, it doesn't even make sense from a business standpoint to me because um, the Hunt family, you know, I I get it. I mean, they're based in Dallas. San Antonio is not Dallas. Um, They have a lot of investments in Texas, but mostly in Dallas. San Antonio isn't really their, their, not their farm. So, uh, you'd have a you'd have an easier time convincing me that the the Hunt family might move the Chiefs to Columbus, Ohio, before they would San Antonio. But the other consideration too is that Hunt family has a lot of business in Kansas City that has nothing to do with the Chiefs. And I mean, we're talking billion dollar investment businesses in Kansas City. And you try if you're Hunt if you're the Hunt family, you try selling a house in Clay County after you just moved the Chiefs to San Antonio. <laughs> So that's my two cents, Nick. I don't, I don't see it happening. But could the Chiefs move to anywhere in the metro if this vote fails? Yeah, I, I mean, there's going to be options on the table. Well, um, I, I mean, that doesn't necessarily San Antonio doesn't necessarily make sense to me. You already get the Cowboys, you get the Texans there. So I mean, the the dollars already being split between the two biggest markets in Texas from a TV perspective, and then with all the college football you have down there, high school football, and then you've got NBA and MLB down there as well. Like, I mean, I know Texas is a massive state and everything, but like there's, I just think there's only so much that can go around in the state of Texas. You could, so I'm sure somebody can argue California has got all these teams. It's a big state too and everything. Right. But with what's been established in Kansas city for as many decades as it has, you know what you're getting in this town from support, uh, from a fan perspective. The team could be 2-14 and 14 like it has been twice, and guess what? Fans still came back, and it didn't take long for them to come back. Like, you have a loyalty built in in this region from Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and potentially some even in Illinois, um, and may even reach a little bit further because the Mahomes era. But you have you just have a certain customer base already built in, and a certain loyalty already built in that is going to be tough to recreate if you essentially burn it to the ground by trying to move to a completely different state that's away from where that collective region's at. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just I mean, the Chiefs are one of the model franchises of the NFL right now. And it's hard to imagine a model franchise where things are going extremely well relocating. I mean, you'd have a lot better chance to me of uh, uh, the Raiders moving to San Antonio from Vegas. <laughs> They've only been for a couple of years than the Chiefs. But like I said, somewhere else in the Metro, if this vote fails tonight, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure that the conversations will start almost immediately. So we will see what happens. But Steeman, as a big supporter, and everybody, hey, yeah, if you want to be a super fan, if you want to be a super comment, it's a great way to make sure that we actually get to your question and you don't end up in the lightning round at the end of the night. So my, there's there's your little 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 hint right there, <laughs> Tiff. 
uh sharon um, another member coming on in thoughts on jk dobbins jk dobbins in 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 kansas city this week nick talking with the chiefs and then we'll have a question about some a running back who is not jk dobbins coming up but you and i were both fans i mean this would have been a a nice little move i don't know if it's as likely now as it might have could have been 24 hours ago but interesting possibility We'll see on that. I mean, because he's only, what, five, maybe six months out from the Achilles recovery and everything. So my guess is the Chiefs wanted to get a look, see where he's at in his recovery, and then they probably got a idea of where their number would be at when the time came. Um, but, I mean, for Dobbins, it's good to get that visit to Kansas City because now other teams may be intrigued to kind of check in on him as well and 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 try to go from there. But – I, I'm not closing the door on that situation. I think it's just a matter of they got an opportunity to kind of look at him, see where he's at and everything, and then kind of, you know, go from that aspect of it. And then obviously the Chiefs may resign who they did today. I understand some people have tried to pair it together and say that that's how they got Clyde back here was by bringing Dobbins in. But I think if Dobbins was at a certain point, I, I personally believe the Chiefs would have signed him today and kind of, move forward and so this Clyde gives him an insurance policy aspect because he knows the scheme knows the system all that type of stuff the reality of it is with Clyde on the roster you're not upgrading like there's nothing that there's nothing that moves the needle with him there it's just you know you have a guy that you know knows the system can execute what you want you know what you're getting from him but if I'm in the Chiefs shoes I'm still trying to find somebody to draft and even down the road, I'm still potentially bringing in Dobbins in before training camp. So, like, I'm not, I'm not closing the door on anything, and I'm still trying to find upgrades if I'm in their shoes. Yeah, and I'll be honest. I mean, I think that that Clyde coming back to the Chiefs actually is a pretty good sign of you know maturity uh, on his part because I think it would have been very easy if you're Clyde with some of the challenges that he had and and maybe not always being the most favorite of the fans and you know and i i think obviously his draft position played a huge part in that and you know the injuries and just being available was a part of that but clyde didn't never lost that locker room he never lost that organization they've always been his biggest fan over there at one overhead drive and we've seen before i mean guys that maybe you know fell out of favor with fans or maybe didn't get the reaction that they wanted leave and i think mccall hardman's a great example grass isn't always greener on the other side of the, the fence and um clyde you know saying hey wait a minute i mean i'm sure he had other opportunities but being willing to come back to Kansas City, you know, where he's had some, you know, tough times in addition to the good times, but knowing he's going to be a backup coming in and, you know, willing and staying in a system that he knows where he feels like he can be successful to me is a good decision because I, I what I see too many times are guys who have been in his spot where maybe they're in a tough place and they feel like they need a change of scenery, they end up going to a team that's not as good with an offense in which they're not comfortable in, a team that doesn't know them and maybe doesn't trust them as much, and it ends up going south. Whereas the Chiefs know him. I mean, the Chiefs, I mean, if they had to play with Clyde as their number one running back because Pacheco didn't went down, they would absolutely do it in a heartbeat. So, I mean, I think it shows some maturity that for him sticking around a little bit, you know, and making that decision rather than just jumping for the sake of changing scenery. Uh, cause, uh, I, I'm sure he had some other opportunities. Uh, so we'll see how it works out. I mean, you're right. I mean, it is, you know what you're getting with Clyde. So it doesn't change the running back room. And I don't know if that will make an impact on J.K. Dobbins' decision, whether, you know, having Clyde here in his presence and having uh, Luis Ruiz Zamet being listed as a running back will change his, uh, his thought process either. But, I mean, I, I guess I'm at least just a fraction of, less convinced that J.K. Dobbins will be here than I was maybe 24 hours ago. But I'm still in the boat. You need an upgrade. <laughs> like, this didn't change anything for me. You still need an upgrade to pair with Pacheco. You still don't have it on the roster. Uh, Sean, super, super mention here. The way Arrowhead is designed, it literally cannot be duplicated because of new building codes. Won't be as loud for sure. I mean, I, 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 I mean, the point about, you know, if the Chiefs, you know, one, if I reimagined Arrowhead or even a new building, it's not going to be the same as Arrowhead. 
And there's probably a legitimate point. I mean, I know, especially with the new stadiums and the way they're just structured and built to kind of give, uh, you know, the best seating arrangements and best vantage points. I mean, um, and just coming from the Super Bowl in Vegas, I mean, that was a loud building and it's an indoor stadium, but I'm not sure that it's anywhere close to being as loud as Arrowhead can be as an outdoor stadium. I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know enough about the science and the, of the acoustics, Nick. So <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, a, a reimagined arrowhead as the chiefs were pitching it would probably be just as close as anything to current arrowhead, but a new stadium for the chiefs will not have the same a, aesthetic and charm that arrowhead does. I, I mean, for me, that's a, that's a well down the road hypothetical that I hope we don't have to get to anytime soon. Uh, I, I'm Stephen Demon. I'm giving you, I'm giving you the respect here because I, I appreciate the super fan knows. I'm not going to put Nick on the spot, but I do know that Ryan Tracy is, is looking for for uh, Nick's favorite offensive tackle from Yale. I, I hadn't had a chance to, ta- to ask him about it yet, so I'm not going to put him on the spot. But I, I will say, I mean, we're, 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 I'm, I'm trying to take care of my boy Ryan, so don't don't worry about that. But uh, might as well give it a plug, Nick. I mean, for um, the, the podcast this week because we talked about tackles. So if you want to talk to know about the tackles that are in the draft this year and where they might fit in for the Chiefs and who's the best option, but you got a you got a favorite down the line in the kid from Yale. Yeah, so you should listen to 41 as a mic with our offensive tackles so you can find out all about it. <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm not giving those views away. We need them. Don't give it away for free. I need to. I'll put the chapters up later tonight, though, so that everybody can go straight to the. I can't remember Kieran's last name. I always. I'm. I'm terrible with names, Nick. You know this, but you will. You'll see it. You'll get it, I'm and you'll get all the other. Yep. You'll get all the other left tackle talk to and who's out there and everything. All right, let me see if I can't get back into the swing of things and the um, actual thread of the because I started jumping around for questions, Nick, and you know how that happens. Um, and you were gonna you I, were gonna be lightning round in like ten minutes. <laughs> I well, <laughs> now I know you you can leave anytime you want to, Nick. I have pledged that I'm gonna try and stay on the stream until we know about the stadium vote. So but oh, you I are not I won't be sticking around till then. I can you promise. are not committed to that whatsoever. No. I will not be. So, uh, let me this see is, if I can't. This is my off night. I will not be doing a full night of work. Let's, let's see if I can't get us back into the the line of uh, questions here in, the, in, in order. But you can always disrupt the order when you know you got a you got a, a super comment. So I'll, I'll give you I'll give uh, the members I'll give you I'll give you those props there. Uh, Bumpa is Tyler Boyd a good Rasheed replacement role wise? I mean, I don't. I don't know if he's going to replace exactly what he did if that comes down that road. But is Tyler Boyd a, a good quality veteran receiver that could be able to work over the middle and do some of the stuff that they need? Yes, he could be a part of the puzzle. Do you want him to be a one or a two? Probably not. But do you want him to be a three and be a part of it? Yes, he could be a part of the overall wide receiving group. So hopefully that answers that question. Because, um, I mean, look, he did well when he had Jamar Chase and T. Higgins on opposite sides of him. So trying to force him into one of those outside receiver positions with Brown, I that may be what he's looking for. But, I mean, with him turning 30 this year, you're not really – I just don't think teams are going to be paying a big dollar amount to try to get him on the roster to essentially kind of be one of their wide receivers who works inside, especially before the draft. Like, uh, that's why he's still going to be out there. He's I, I will be surprised if he's signed before the draft. After their draft, yeah, I totally expect them to be signed pretty quickly because then teams know who they did or didn't get. Did they get the big body receiver that they wanted? Did they get the one or two that they believe that wide receiver in the draft can be? Yes, all those you know, all those things combined. So that's that's kind of where I think that road is headed for most veteran receivers. Yeah, and you know, and I I mean I agree, and I know that the Chiefs have been interested. They absolutely checked on the price of of Tyler Boyd very early in free agency, and at that point, um, the price was not in their ballpark of what they were looking at. Now, is the price on April second for a guy like Boyd the same as it would have been on March fifteenth? No, I mean it's the market changes and the the, the realism of, of all that changes. So, um, yeah, there there would be I think a little bit of a difference there. 
And so there's a possibility that, hey, maybe they are closer in the numbers. And I could certainly see, hey, if Tyler Boyd's looking for a place where he can put up some numbers, I mean, he is not the kind of receiver to me that is going to be a, a number one or a number two receiver in most systems. But, you know, like you mentioned, could he come to Kansas City and on uh, an ideal circumstances, if he's in an offense in which, you know, hey, Rasheed Rice and, and Hollywood Brown and Travis Kelsey are getting attention, then he's going to be getting one-on-one -on -one matchups all over the place with Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback. There's going to be opportunities for the ball to come his way if he's getting the fourth best defender on most teams. So at the right price, I mean, I think Kansas City would be a great place for him, but it just, you know, depends on whether or not that price, you know, matches up with what the Chiefs are willing to spend. And uh, I did look at it and know that over the cap has the, the Chiefs right now, they would get the very, very last compensation pick um, for losing Willie Gay in the compensation formula. Obviously, that could still change. But right now, you do get to the point where teams are uh, more than willing to wait until after the draft and wait until the compensation formula pick deadline passes. And a guy like Boyd, I mean, he could still be on the market on, on May 6th. So, um, and that wouldn't bother me in the least if, you know, you have to wait for a guy like that just to affect the formula uh, wouldn't be a problem for me. So we will see it. But I think you've got to make a legitimate point that you wait until after the draft to see what happens and and for the player too. I mean, because now maybe you sign in the spot right now and then that team goes out and drafts a couple of receivers. Maybe you don't feel as good as you felt. Um, Zen Charlie, I know the Chiefs are pretty good at safety, but would you be interested in signing Justin Simmons? Um, I, uh, with Justin Simmons, he's 30, 31 range. It, it, it's going to depend on if he wants more than vet minimum. I know that sounds bad to say and everything, but I get a feeling he's still out there because he wants more than vet minimum and he probably wants the chance to start and be starting safety. So if the chiefs are confident in Brian cook and what he can be and with what they already, what they have in him, what they may have in Shamar and Connor, what the question would be what the chiefs do with their, free safety position uh, to replace Mike Edwards. And if they feel that that's Nase Johnson, if they feel that's Chamari Connor, or if it's not on the roster at this time, then we'll see on that front. But I mean, I, I've got a feeling if you're, if you're bringing in Justin Simmons, you're bringing him in to start over Brian cook. Like that's, that's what he's going to want. That's what he's going to expect. So, I mean, if he wants to chase a ring for vet minimum and be part of the, a part of the safety group, but maybe not necessarily the starter every time, then I don't think the Chiefs would be against it. But I don't think that that's – in terms of what they need to handle right now, left tackle, adding on to the pass rush, a defensive end, and wide receiver is kind of really more where things are probably headed in terms of what you're, what you're doing financially before the draft. Then you're doing what you're going to do in the draft. Then anything that's left over, you kind of maybe add at that point. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of veteran safeties out there right now. And that's why, I mean, the price should be coming down on them. Um, I think, uh, yeah, if, if guys like Simmons are looking for more than veteran minimum money or, you know, a veteran minimum plus some incentives money, I don't know if it's there because uh, teams have their starting safeties and there's just an abundance of veterans out there right now. So, uh, I mean, I think the prices are going to have to come down. And at some point, I am sure that, hey, Brett Veach is going to be talking to somebody's agent and somebody's agent's going to say to Brett, oh, yeah, by the way, my safety um, is available at this price. I mean, that's basically what happened with Drew Trankel and Mike Edwards last year. So uh, wait for the prices to come down. There are really good safeties. And like you said, I mean, if the Chiefs sign somebody, it's to be a number three safety and just insurance on Brian Cook's injury. That's not something you want to pay a ton of money for. But with the guys that are out there right now and Justin Simmons amongst them, um, there's too many good big names, too many good players that if you can get at an affordable price, uh, sign me up for. But uh, I just wouldn't overpay for them right now because I think the prices are going to come down. Um, I'm you, Nick. You are gonna you're gonna strangle me after the after the podcast tonight, and so I, I would like, never do such a thing. And Matt is uh, Matt is putting something incorrect out there. I would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. But I might have to. I might have to to, to buy a, a, a an ice cream cone or something. Um, Steeman says that we we didn't mention Patrick Paul from Houston uh, on the on the on the list the other day. We did not. That's true. We did not go through every single tackle available for the draft. 
um, for the most part, probably the ones that just fit the Chiefs and their interests. Uh, did you get a chance to look at Paul, Nick? Or I did. It sounds like he's more of a guard. So I'll just I'll put it out here for you right now. I had an Easter family dinner to get to, so we were on. We that had is 30, true. We had thirty minutes to get through that thing because I had a family dinner to get to that I was technically late for. Rather than the you know podcast. normally hour and a half that sometimes that we we meander. Yeah, I set <laughs> I set a specific limit. I told Matt here are the boundaries because I got a family. I got to go spend time with my nieces and my brother and my mom, and that's what we did. Um, all right, here's your thing on Patrick Paul. <clears throat> Paul has a size and build you want in a nimble offensive tackle. He has a lateral quickness to get to the second level or to go out in the space on a screen. He has a mean streak and his run blocking that serves him well. Paul can get a little out of control at times when he needs to get to the second level and misses block. He's a strong puncher away from – he's a stronger punch away from destroying opponents. He has two weaknesses, though. His inability to anchor and re-anchor when blocking a wide nine with a good bull rush. He also can't change directions quick enough when the defender shoots to his inside shoulder. Paul also has to stop dropping his inside shoulder on his initial set and, um, and creating an off-balance thing that good ends are going to take advantage of. A defender will plant him in his kick step if he keeps that shoulder drop coming out of his stance. There's your uh, Paul breakdown for you. <laughs> that is extensive. <laughs> that was a, that was a couple games. I'm like, a couple, I mean four. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so there's your Patrick Paul. Just for there's, you, Steam and Demon. There's your Patrick Paul. And then um, uh, Sean really likes Troy Fontenot from Washington. I know. We talked about the other Washington tackle, right? Um, yeah, Rosen. Rosen. Uh, yes, Rosen. I don't remember. I don't want to say it because I'm going to say the, the character from Rookie of the Year right now. And I don't want to say that. And then people <laughs> tell me, make fun of me for weeks about saying uh, Adonis instead of Adonai Mitchell. So... Mm -hmm. That's why I call him A.D. Mitchell, because... I know you do. We had this conversation. <laughs> it's my cop-out. <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah, the guy referencing, he's going to... I got him. He's going to be a guard. So, it, it, his arm length, if I remember correctly, didn't fit, and his height wasn't where it needed to be. There you go. Yeah, and Chiefs are one of those teams, and arm length is a, is a big deal for them, so... There is absolutely no doubt about it. Appreciate those questions, guys. And I will definitely uh, use some of that uh, that uh, super fan, super, super mention money for Nick. Uh, I'll get him an ice cream cone. No, you will not. Diet, not a Diet I'm Coke? Not allowed to. Can I at I'm least get you a Diet Coke? Uh, you can't tell me where the, where the money came from. <laughs> <laughs> if you just happen to give me a Coke, I don't know where, I don't know where it came from. Uh, Casey Harold asked him with, with Carson Wentz, I think the tush push is coming to KC. Uh, I don't think I've asked you yet about what you think about Carson Wentz coming to KC, but how about that? And how about the tush push? Tush push belongs to a guy named Jason Kelsey. <laughs> so, like, point blank, Jason Kelsey is the reason that that happened. That's the reason that that worked out between him and the offensive line coach, Stoutland. If either of them are coming to Kansas City, then, okay, maybe there's a possibility. But uh, it, there's a reason the that – play didn't travel well when other teams tried it because not everybody has a Jason Kelsey with his size, his leverage and his ability to get the way that he does. And with the way Jeff Stalin is as an offensive line coach and the way he could have them all move in with a wedge block style. So, I mean, just because people played with the Eagles doesn't mean that they can execute everything exactly the same way. So no, I don't, I don't think the quote unquote, Tush push part of it's coming. Now, could Wentz run a quarterback scramble or a QB sneak or something like that? Yes, he could. But if he's coming in, then that's a pretty good indicator. Oh, they just took 15 out and they just put this other guy in. Gee, I wonder what they're going to do on the short yardage situation. Yeah, that's the only thing for me is that, you know, I mean, you're if you're if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna have like a Carson Wentz or somebody else as your short yardage quarterback. I mean, there's going to be times you just can't run a sneak. I mean, you've got to keep the defense honest. But um, the at least the benefit is is that you bring somebody in. I mean, you are going to keep def force the defense to play you a little honest because we saw last year, especially in the playoffs. I mean, there were times that defenses just simply did not respect the the middle of the field. And absolutely, I mean, you you and I could have picked up probably four yards on a quarterback sneak on a couple of those fronts that the Chiefs saw. Well, you can speak for yourself, buddy, okay? <laughs> I don't know if you know about my knees and my back, but being able well, see, to squat I was... down and 
and lean forward, man. I am clumsy. Okay. I was saying I could get three or four. You could have probably gotten five or six. Matt, I don't you Matt. I literally fell down in my garage because I stepped on the the little the garage lip there, fell forward and broke my wrist a couple years ago. That's when I had to fully accept that any athletic ability I may have had in high school, that's long gone. Okay. That was like the official ceremony that said you have absolutely no athletic ability left in your body. So I've just accepted that my ability now and my body is the equivalent of a 70 or 80 year old man physically. You know, it technically wasn't until I I reached 42 and I ruptured my second patella tendon Mm -hmm. um, that I accepted that I was not going to be able to teach myself a knuckleball well enough to pitch in the major leagues. So, well, at least you kept that dream alive for as long as you could. (laughs) (laughs) I kept that dream alive for an unrealistic period of time. Uh, I'm going to touch on this just just a quick one because I needed to talk about this earlier and won't go in depth with it. But um, really, anything with Rasheed Rice, it is way too early to think about anything. And and especially like the Chiefs moving on or cutting him, there's way too much in this investigation to go. Uh, I mean, have I thought or learned anything at this point that would lead me to believe that the Chiefs would do something like that? And walk away from him no but that doesn't mean that things won't change but uh, way too early in the investigation we don't know enough about anything at this point so i'm just gonna leave it right there uh was there some bad judgment shown absolutely but beyond that let's let the investigation play out and get all the information and then we will go from there uh, a couple of questions on this one. Um, Stuart's among the ones asking any news on Mike Dana. Uh, obviously been a little bit of smoke. There's been some speculation that he and the chiefs are talking and maybe getting closer to a deal, Nick, but I think we're both all obviously in agreement. This would be a good guy to have back at the right price. Yeah. It'd be good to have him back at, 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 a, at a, at a nice comfortable price under 5 million per year range. That would be fantastic or do some incentives that he could reach to to get to a certain number that allows him to hit the market again next year if he would like to. Um, I mean, he's had plenty of time on the market now to try to to try to try get a good dollar number for himself. So the market's kind of set at what he can or can't get right now. And it's just a matter of if he wants to try to do a one-year deal and come back to the Chiefs and um, try to continue to add on to – his case on film, but I mean, for the most part, teams got four years to be able to judge what he can or can't do for their potential scheme. And the fact he remains unsigned kind of just tells me that like either the numbers, either the teams don't like the number or there's just not a lot his particular set of skills fits in the chiefs and anybody that's a part of the Steve Spagnolo tree type of thing. Yeah, and that's and this to me, we're all like I said, we're also in that point now where teams are giving some thought to the deadline for compensation formula and signing free agents. And if you're a, if you're a team that's interested in Mike Dana, you might w- very well be thinking, let's hey, let's wait until after the draft. Let's wait until May sixth when you know we're not going to have to give up any space in the in the compensation formula for signing a Mike Dana. And maybe there's some teams out there who are telling him, hey, after the draft, we might be interested and we might have, you know, some money. I, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, sometimes that that does happen. So if if it doesn't get done before the draft, I mean, that wouldn't stun me. I mean, I think that there would absolutely be some motivation for the Chiefs to say, wait a minute, you know, we're going to get this done. I mean, the money might be better before the draft than after the draft, Mike. So that could absolutely be a possibility. Um, not saying it's not going to get done. It wouldn't surprise me if, if Mike didn't sign with somebody until after the draft, but, um, he absolutely obviously would be a good fit. And I think I, I, I see no reason why Mike would not be interested in coming back to Kansas city. He's seen to enjoy it here. And I think that he would like to, but I also know that this is his best chance to get paid and somebody else is going to pay him. He's already got two rings, Nick. I mean, mm-hmm. you only got so many fingers and I mean, <laughs> You can you can you can put a lot of lot more in the bank than just rings. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, also Casey Chiefs twelve bringing Donovan Smith into the conversation. I mean, the Chiefs obviously once they got the luxurious Sneed trade done, they've got some money. I mean, they can afford some moves. Um, have not made a move of the tackle market yet. Donovan Smith, I think, is still a possibility. What do you think? 
Yeah, I still think he's a possibility. I still think them adding a tackle before the draft is a possibility. But you brought up the key thing that I think people need to continue to remember. Is there a certain number in the formula that they know they can't pay per year to be able to not have it count against it until after the draft? So if that's going to be something that cancels out something that they may only want to get comp-wise, whether it's the Chiefs or another team, they may not be able to say, well, he wants this amount, and we, if we do this, we potentially lose this hypothetical comp pick and – we're just a couple weeks away from that finish line of knowing that that has a possibility of being locked in. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is kind of the this is kind of the point where if you're signing guys, it's for numbers that you know aren't going to affect anything. So, if it's going to be one of those higher numbers that would be in the Drew Tranquil per year type of range, yeah, then teams probably are like, yeah, you know, not a not a great idea right now to try to do that. But we'd love to have, yeah, yeah. Can you wait a little bit? Huh? You wait till you know right before Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And um, just a, a quick update: uh, we still don't have any new more new uh, election results from the stadium vote. We still just have the um, early vote coming in um, from Jackson County. That would be the advance voting and walk-in voting. Um, that was the fifty-six to forty-four split in favor of no. Uh, very early. I mean, that is literally one of one hundred and four precincts in, in Jackson County. So, um, a lot from Jackson County. We are still waiting for anything from Kansas City, Missouri, and their early results. So, um, much too early. But right now, the no vote with the early lead. And Matt, we were- I have a I have a non-election update for you when you're ready. Lay it on me. All right. So, in the comp pick cancellation chart. That has become the hot trend. Comp pick, comp pick, comp picks. That's all you ever see on Twitter. Uh, With the signing of Marquise Brown, that eliminated the hypothetical six-round pick the Chiefs could potentially have gotten for Nick Allegretti next year. Yep. What the two that are available right now at the APY per year of $3 million is Tommy Townsend and Willie Gay Jr., which both would hypothetically warrant seventh round picks. So if there's anything APY that would either be above that or around that would likely, if I remember correctly, cancel those out. So whenever you ask the question, why is Timmy Timerson or whoever may not be resigned yet? um, I believe that is probably likely your answer. If it's something that's above that APY, they may be laying low from the idea for right now. Yeah, the uh, and, 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 and over the cap, which does a great job of projecting these, by which the is way. where I'm at on it, because that's there the only you go. Has a chart, and, and Nick I Cortez mean, does an amazing job at it. And literally, Willie Gay is the last pick, and Tommy Townsend is just two picks before that. Yeah. So I mean, literally anybody signing around the league could knock Willie Gay off the formula, and mm-hmm. three contracts could knock off Tommy Townsend. So. Uh, yeah, you could see why the Chiefs would not necessarily want to sign somebody else's free agent right now because they would absolutely be knocking their own pick out of the compensation formula. Um, of course, they can't control the other 31 teams, so somebody there gives a bit of contract. But once again, I mean, that can also affect another team. I mean, they, they sign somebody for $8 million a year, and all of a sudden they lose a comp pick. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons why this time of year – um, free agency oftentimes just dries up before the draft because teams don't want to, you know, fiddle with the formula any more than it is. I mean, if you're a team that's hosed on the formula and isn't getting any cop picks, it's not going to affect you. You'll be like, yeah, we'll spend some money willy nilly. But there is, I mean, no doubt. I mean, and I wonder if this is going to get changed in the future because it has just an absolute chilling effect on free agency once you get into April and you get closer and closer to the draft. Well, I mean, I feel like the uh, another great discussion I feel like the NFLPA can have for their next CBA agreement <laughs> down the road <laughs> should have already happened a long time ago with stuff like this. There you go. All right. Now, I, why, while you were doing that, I should have been looking for getting back into where I am for the next question. So, uh, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, last was a 720 <laughs> with KC Chiefs 12. So... <laughs> Well, there you go. See, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad to have you here paying attention. So, I think we had some questions that were kind of already answered with uh, J.K. Dobbins and Mike Dana and 
Uh, I will just point out that Samuel saying Nick is bang on because Nick is usually bang on. So I don't know what that means, Samuel. Can you put in the comment section? Is that something that is delightful or is it hurtful? Oh, that is absolutely, absolutely good. There's no doubt about that. Matt, you're assuming. I've learned not to assume. I'm not. I, the exclamation could point be, tell, tells tells everything I need to know. Something we don't know about right now, Matt. We are both <laughs> in a, a certain age bracket that, that you know, that we don't know what it means. We talked about Clyde. Nobody knows what it means. It's provocative. <laughs> no. Hey, would the Chiefs and Eagles be better off if they just made a trade for uh, Snead and Reddick? Uh, I don't athletically. I mean, size wise, athletically, age wise, I I don't think Reddick was. Uh, I don't know if anymore if he was really kind of got the same type of zip in his athletic ability overall. So he can go play in that uh, wide nine scheme with the Jets that honestly probably fits him better with what he has left in the tank and gives him more of an edge and angle from that wide nine perspective to be able to kind of be able to speed by the tackle. And the Chiefs scheme could have been fine with doing uh, some of the loops, some of the pulls and everything, but I don't remember the Eagles cap at the time and if they could have taken that on. And then also you're assuming that Vic Fangio and his defensive scheme would have wanted uh legerious Sneed, and also i don't know if the eagles would want to pay that big of a contract for legerious Sneed, but the titans did so the titans got him and the titans can uh you know enjoy that uh, reddick did he have the 14 million dollar cap hit before the trade i uh, believe so so yeah that would have been a no for me because the advantage of <laughs> at least making the, the Sneed trade is that you got 19 million dollars in cap savings Hassan Reddick would have only given you five million. Uh-oh. You sounded like sounded like you were on the set of Shark Tank right there. <laughs> like, somebody's pitching it to you, and you're like, "We just need an investment, a blank, blank amount." And you're like, yeah, "I'm out. You know I'm out. No, I'm I'm out." <laughs> if Hassan if Hassan if Reddick does not have a patent, I'm out. <laughs> dun 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 dun. <laughs> Okay, now we've hit the rock bottom part of the podcast where I am literally trying to type something into my search engine and I forgot what I yeah, was Yeah, Matt, you see how hard for. it is when somebody's trying to uh, connect some streams for people to watch us? Tell me about it because it was about Hassan Reddick. And it is because what I was going to say is that yeah, I have no no person no, no, I, I have no solution. I thought I had I thought I had an idea there for a second, Nick, but I don't have an idea. So you know what, Matt? Um, it's gonna come back to you and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be brilliant. We both know it. We both yeah, know I'm it. Just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, ha- I'd be, I'd be happy with the Chiefs linebackers the way that they are right now. And there's, yeah, a, no, those, those are the guys who are starting unless there's injuries. So if you're getting, if you're getting somebody, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a vet minimum, uh, free agent, or it's gonna be somebody late in the draft. And because Samuel thinks that you're bang on, and I agree. Uh, Again, once, we still don't know what that means, Matt. Let's not just good. keep throwing it around like you know, like it's a positive. It is, we don't it know. Is, it is all definitely good. I have no doubt about that. See, man, you keep you keep driving down this road. We're gonna find out later. Oh boy, that was that was not what we thought it was. Will the Chiefs double dip at wide receiver in the draft? I know I it's would. way too early, but you would. Oh, that was I was not expecting a definitive answer from you, Nick. I'm stunned. <laughs> Burn. Look at Matt out here burning ruthless um yeah no if i would yes you draft multiple wide receivers this is a rich draft there's a lot of talented guys that could fit this scheme and it's cost control for four years so if i'm in the Chiefs' shoes i go get two cost control wide receivers and i turn that position in from a weakness to a strength and i don't look back i don't even care if you have seven quality wide receivers on the roster go get more create competition if you're trying to three-peat, you got to create competition at every single level. You can't just keep bringing everybody back and trying to run it back just like last year because that's what happened last time. You got you got smacked around by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Super Bowl the following year. You need to add as many young, hungry people that haven't been to the Super Bowl as possible and as many guys as you can get that are young, cost-controlled, and have that drive that you're going to need down that stretch. I I mean, I can't argue with anything that you just said. I mean, especially with the depth of this. Yeah, Matt, because you're a winner. You want to win. That's why. <laughs> the depth of the wide receiver market in this draft? Yeah. I mean, I think obviously 
I think you can get quality players into the fourth round. And I mean, I'm not opposed to drafting any, you know, players if you think that they can play a role for you later on than that. I mean, and this is target rich environment. So if it's a deep draft, take a couple of shots at it because there's always, I mean, with receivers, especially you're not going to hit on all of them. I mean, that's a, and, and right now, I mean, it, coaching is a part of it. I mean, the chiefs of all, I think are, are, are kind of showing that too. I mean, you know, are they the world's greatest team at coaching up wide receivers? No, I, and I don't think they have been for a while. They haven't had the formula. Uh, however, I mean, you say, say the same thing about cornerbacks. Once again, I mean, you could give, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You could give Dave Merritt a golden retriever and he could probably get that dog into a Pro Bowl alternate spot. I mean, there's absolutely no, I, no, no doubt in my mind that a, that a golden retriever would get some pass breakups playing for Dave Merritt. But is, is are the Chiefs going to turn that 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 same golden retriever into an All Pro receiver? No, that the movie would not pan out well there. So, wah, wah, wah. That's all <laughs> I got to say, uh, you know, Samuel, we talked a little bit about Boyd earlier. We didn't talk necessarily talk about price. Um, that's the key. I mean, I don't know what 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 Boyd's price is down to now. I know earlier in the process it was out of the Chiefs' price range. I would assume now that it's probably a little bit more realistic, but how much is he looking for? I mean, to me, I mean, I wouldn't want to been be more than maybe three to four million plus incentives, Nick. I don't know where you're at, but remember that remember that um, that comp chart we talked about a little bit ago. Yes. What was that? What was that magic number? <laughs> was it three and a half? Two and a half? Three. Three. All right. That then, cancels out one of them. So until he goes under that or it's yeah, after yeah. that formula pick, you wait until it. wait until wait until May 6th. You're going to be waiting go. until then because I'm wait telling you right May. now. Because I think what the going rate at one point was seven or eight per year. Yeah. If I remember correctly. And uh, that's going to that's gonna cause you some comp chart problems since you guys are all about that comp chart life. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> the comp chart life. <laughs> <laughs> Pono and I, I will add a caveat on this, Nick. Just to not put you under quite, you know, as much. No, let's stress. go for it, man. We've been pinning my back against the wall. Let's go for it. Because I Ready. know, Just I wait. mean, I know, I know that your least favorite question a month before the draft is hypotheticals is, or what? <laughs> are, are, is a hypothetical who should the Chiefs take at thirty two? <laughs> but but he didn't say thirty two. No, he, he didn't. No, if, what's your priority position selection in the draft? Sorry, I, then I, I I take it all back. What is your priority position in the draft? <laughs> All right. Here's what I'll do. I'll do it twofold, and it'll be quick because we may get in a lightning round. I see we're only halfway through comments here, Matt, and it's already 8 o'clock, man. <laughs> so, I'm, on your, I'm on your time. Remember, I'm here I'm here until, you know, at least 75% of the vote is in. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just trying to make sure you don't have to tap dance by yourself for 30 minutes. Like, hey, anybody got any good jokes, huh? <laughs> uh, I vowed right, so to to be yes. here until, until we get some, uh, get some results from Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, if I'm in the Chiefs' shoes, I want to get multiple wide receivers. This is such a good wide receiver class. Don't miss out on this one. Go get yourself multiple receivers. One less headache you're going to have to worry about down the road here, and you won't be, be you won't be turning back around wondering like, that's a pretty good wide receivers class. Probably should probably should add one of those other guys or add guys in general. So um, yeah, if I'm in the Chiefs' shoes, multiple wide receivers. Um, I'm going through defensive tackles right now, so. I do not know where I'm going to be at on that or edge rusher, but I, from what I've heard, it's not the most robust market in either spot. So you better get that pretty early if you want. But if I'm, if you're asking me to lean a certain way, offensive tackle, wide receiver, I think you gotta, you gotta get, gotta get some people, get some people, and I don't care how many you get, get a couple of them if you need to. In my mock, in my mock draft simulators. It's got, it's got, it's got multiple guys at both those spots, because I, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving a stone unturned on, on those positions, and there's enough quality there that I like that I would add to that mix. So if I'm in the Chiefs' shoes, add a defensive tackle, add somebody that can be your long-term one tech, if you need to, or somebody that can, that can be behind Chris Jones, but add a defensive tackle. If you want to add two defensive tackles, that's fine. I don't care. But like you know, at this point, I've already burned through all the Chiefs' picks. In just three positions, uh, for the most part. But like that's those are the things that I would like to see. I mean, if you want to go best player available, get a cornerback, safety, or linebacker, okay. But 
Like those those spots, there's enough there. And then at running back, there's some – Matt and I will be doing this one down the road because I need to get through a defensive line. But there's some sneaky good running backs late in the draft that if the Chiefs want to go take one of those three guys and they get one of them, I may do a dance on a Q&A or a podcast. You know, it might just happen. It might just happen. But I have to find some good props to go with it to make it memorable for all of you. <laughs> it's all about the props. It is, Matt. Okay. That's that's the thing. So I wondered, that's what I would do if I'm in that position. But I mean, if I'm in the Chiefs shoes, you want to get if you can get one of the premium wide receivers in the first round, cool. If you can get an offensive tackle that you really like in the first or second round, awesome. And if you don't get one in one position, try to get in the other. And then there's some defensive tackles along the way that you really like that you could get. Because, for example, Mur- I don't think he's going to drop, but Byron Murphy from Texas, like that's one of the rare guys that can play one or three for the Chiefs. The way that guy took on double teams and how advanced he already is in his technique, I've already given you a preview on 41 is the mic already. I've already given that away. But like that's a really impressive guy that could either back up Chris Jones or play a one-tech spot with what I saw on tape. I'm like, he's got the skill set for both. How did that happen? So, I mean, like that to have a guy who's got that athletic ability, that strength can take on a double, already understands how to drop the knee when teams are trying to double team him and creates a pile. Like he is advanced beyond his years. Cause I remember watching Don Terry Poet practice during those summer months, just watching him learn that and Romeo Cornell and them teaching them that over and over and over again. And the hundreds and hundreds of reps he had to do just to get used to that to make that second nature for him. Because in college, at his size, he wasn't going to get pushed around. But in the NFL, the guys are going to be just as strong and had no problem pushing around 340-pound offensive linemen. So I'm saying whenever I see defensive linemen that already have that in their makeup, I'm like, that's going up higher in the chart. <laughs> yep. I, and once again, <laughs> I can't argue. I, I mean, I can't argue. And, and technically, Pono didn't ask me. So I, my, my opinion does uh, not matter. Matt? kidding you this is your party this is your show <laughs> you you answer whatever you want sir <laughs> i am i'm working under the assumption that the chiefs will most likely end up taking a receiver or a tackle in the first round um i could see them going defensive line if things really go sideways in a weird way because you just don't know how drafts are going to unfold but um i, I mean I, it, there's a few certainties that i feel i mean i'd be really surprised if the chiefs take a linebacker i mean they could but I, I think I'd be a little surprised. Um, but receiver, corner, I mean, it's kind of what the Chiefs do. I mean, that that's that's definitely a spot. And I I, I think it's less likely now that they have got Carson Wentz in, in-house. And I'm still obviously at least the second biggest Chris Oladokun fan in Kansas City. I, I would like to claim to being the first, but I know there's a couple that people that want to fight me for it. So I'm not going to I'm not going to fight too much on it. But I, I don't know. There's, there's something in my gut that says that, you know, Brett Veach might just take a sixth round quarterback and I just can't explain why, but it's just something not in my gut, Nick, but your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> I'm sorry. You made me laugh. <laughs> Ah, Brandon finally getting the question that I thought we would have gotten in a few hours ago, but because the the Chiefs have done so much in the last few days, it does feel like that they signed uh, Luis Ruiz Zamet uh, about a month and a half ago. But rugby player, international Nick, thoughts? Well, we covered we covered <laughs> it on forty one is the mic. We did. That's <laughs> and true. And be that also as... that also seems like it was a few days ago. Yeah. Well, <laughs> apparently. Uh... No, um, look, wake me up when August begins. I know that isn't what the answer you want to hear, but he's never played football before, never put on shoulder pads, never taken a hit in the NFL. So, like, there's a there's a lot of first times he's going to go through that are going to be that are not going to be easy for him. And like, I mean, we'll find out what type of competitor he is. I'm sure he's a great competitor because to be at the level he was in his sport, like, you have to be very competitive. You have to have a certain drive. And to perform it the way he did, you have to have a certain drive. So props to him on that. Um, but like he's got a long road ahead of him. And so I'm personally not going to put any Justin Ross um, hype, summer hype video type pressure on a guy who's never played the uh, position before. So, I mean, look, it like I'll, I'll make judgment at the end of August. But until then, 
like I have absolutely I've, I've got nothing but a nothing but a minimal expectation on it just because of what all he's gonna have to go through I mean he is an international player who has never played football before so the Occam's razor would suggest that I mean it's a red shirt year that he will probably uh, be on the practice squad. You probably see him in the, the, in some training camp games, but other wise and spring training, uh, spring training, I've got baseball in the brain from, from March here, uh, training camp games, uh, preseason games. Thank you very much. I eventually stumble on the right term, but I, I, I have very modest expectations. I mean, yeah, I, 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 anything above and beyond that, that the Chiefs got from him this year is gravy, but you know, they don't have to, it's a, it's a long-term investment. The guy is 22 years old. It's not like he's, you know, a, a 27 year old rugby player that you got to figure out how to get something out of immediately. And we've, we've obviously have been down this road before. I mean, I don't see Brock Lesnar in the NFL Hall of Fame, so I'm pretty sure that, you know, sometimes these things that look like they're going to work don't work out. So uh, to me, I, is there a reason to why that this could absolutely be a brilliant play by the Chiefs? Absolutely. I mean, there's ways to see his skill set translating to the football field. Um, I could see him, you know, <laughs> I mean, if you look at his rugby highlights, he seems built for kick returns and jet sweeps and that kind of thing. I don't know what's going to happen when you throw in the football for the first time. Um, I mean, I could certainly, I mean, if, and, and if he's across the field and Travis Kelsey decides to lateral the ball to him from 30 yards away, he's probably scoring, but I don't know. We'll see what happens, but um, I I'm with, I, Hey, I have, have very modest expectations for year one and then see what happens. Oh, then we get into the part of the stream where I couldn't hear you because I accidentally muted you, Nick. You muted me? How dare you? I didn't mute you. I muted the tab, so therefore How I couldn't hear you. you. But we've at least reached that point in the conversation now. So, <laughs> uh, Sharon, preference for opponent in game one. I know we've talked a little bit about this before, but uh, I still enjoy talking about it because I like scheduling. I like scheduling conversations, Nick. All right, Matt, schedule away then. Let's hear it. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm still putting my I even though my gut says that the best game for the NFL that they would love to have would be Texans at Chiefs, CJ Stroud, Houston, Mahomes, all that stuff. I think they'd love that. I'm still my gut still says that it's gonna be Tampa at Kansas City and Baker Mayfield at and and Patrick Mahomes. Because I think that they just the NFL just wants to make it a, a a at least a high a high enough marquee profile game that it'll be entertaining for viewers. But I think that they just don't want to put teams in a situation where they're going to have forced them to play a a meaningful playoff determination game. And obviously, NFC AFC games have the lowest of priority when it comes to mattering to the football season. So it doesn't matter if the Chiefs win the game. Of course, the last year they lost the game in theory when you know, they probably should have won, but. I, and I and, and maybe CBS is going to want to say no, you can't have that that Houston game because they may want it too. So it all depends on how how the network schedule all pieces together and making everybody happy. I just feel like Chiefs Buccaneers might be the 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 orphan that nobody wants that just makes sense. Oh my. Was that dark? I was a little dark, wasn't it? I'm sorry. I mean, you went down a road. <laughs> Man, I uh, I didn't really mean to throw that kind of sunshine down. I apologize, no. everybody. I, I kind of kind of got I, dark. I, I've I've changed a little bit, and I think it's either the New Orleans Saints or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at this point. Not that I prefer them, I just think that it's going to be one of those two. Like, hey, I mean, the Saints don't really have anything marquee, so you don't really have a lot of fun storylines other than. Tyra Matthew and Willie Gay returning to Arrowhead on Thursday night as they watch the banner, you know, as they watch the banner for what the, or, you know, for Willie Gay and Colin Saunders and all these former Chiefs. So, like, that's the only hype angle that you have because I'm sorry, Derek Carr ain't going to be the hype angle for that. You don't have a quarterback that gives you the hype for that game. So, <clears throat> you put that one out there, football's back for the first time. People are going to watch it. And it'll turn into a blowout, and then that'll be that. So you can get that game out of the way for everybody <laughs> if you want, honestly. Um, but yeah, and then we can also watch potentially 
Trevor Penning, um, because I saw in the comment section today that somebody said that was a huge miss for me. Like, he's only been in the league two years. He's had two line coaches. He plays for the Saints. I don't know how that's a miss two years into it. There is that. Uh, Des the <laughs> Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Des the gym. Any idea when Cook or Minahue will be ready this season? I've been interested to see Charles and Minahue uh, in the spotlight so much this week with the launch of his YouTube channel. So, um, I mean, feel free to go subscribe to his channel as well. But I mean, if you subscribe to this one too, that'd be awesome as well. So, um, and subscribe to everybody's YouTube channel. As far as I guess I'm concerned, is the message here. Uh, but he seems to be in good spirits, Nick. So uh, recovery going well, but. Um, I would so certainly the expectation is that nothing until training camp and maybe even that is optimistic. I mean, probably later than that. Yeah. I mean, we still don't definitively know hundred percent what cook had going on. And until, until the chiefs either speak at their first opening day of training, or, you know, strength training that we would have available if they open it up that week or whatever day they would, um, or the end of Memorial Day around then, um, whenever we would potentially chat with them during OTAs. Until then, I mean, we're not really going to have definitive timelines or answers on where either of those guys are at. But, I mean, a mini huge just happened in January. So, I mean, you know, you're hoping he can start getting the swing in training camp, but you don't definitely know. And Cook's been out since early December. So, depending on what his injury is, you're, you're hoping you kind of see him back without knowing definitively what happened, you're hoping you see him back by training camp. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. And I mean, I mean, you with the ACL, I mean, you know, with the way that players are coming back from ACLs these days, coming back by July or August would not be unheard of, but I still would not be surprised if he started the, the regular season on the pup list. And if you got him back at some point during the season, that's great. Um, when I, when I did ask Brett Veach at the, the combine in Indianapolis about cook, you know, he said there was an outside chance that maybe he could get on the field during uh, the third phase of, of the offseason program during OTAs. But if he did, I mean, that sounds like it would probably be more as an observer than anything else. And uh, I don't know if at that point you'd be wanting him to to go at a certain speed if that he'd be ready for that. But by July, absolutely, they think so. He should be at least a full go, hopefully, by training camp. Um, we will see. Um, CSH. Uh, Jake Paul, which I assume is not the Jake Paul that I'm thinking of, Nick. Uh, is that a wrestler from... or a boxer? I can't remember. <laughs> I thought he was just an idiot, but um, I could be. That could just be my old man, you know, showing up there, Nick. But or the BYU so is that tackle, the wrestler or the boxer. <laughs> Apparently, attack the tackle from Houston. <laughs> That's Patrick Paul. Is it... No, <laughs> is that... I, gotta look up, I gotta look up Jake Paul now. Oh, that's the one that's going to be. Yeah, that's the boxer that's going to be fighting Mike Tyson. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. That's why I did not think he was the tackle from Houston. But see, <laughs> we all we all have problems. <laughs> all right, let me get back to the question. <laughs> <clears throat> and the only reason I'm laughing is because we had uh, one of the Paul one of the Paul kids was uh, that was Grim Bentinger. People that don't know here in Kansas City area. After Sunday sound off, uh, Graham Bensinger has a show on KSHB 41, and he was he had a, a 90 minute special with one of the Paul uh, kids this past week. So, like, I mean, just having somebody bring that up, just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Now I gotta, I gotta look, man. I gotta stall here for a second, see if Logan Paul. Yeah, okay. So Logan Paul was the one he did the special on the WWE that was wrestling. It was in WrestleMania, and then Jake Paul is the boxer. So. That's there you go. Glad we got that cleared away for you and got I, it. for everybody on here. I know you were terribly concerned about it, but now we're all on the same page. We're all on the same um, page. And Patrick, yeah, Patrick Paul, Paul is the Houston Patrick tackle. Paul be, Patrick Paul's a second round pick, and, and Matt, you already know how I feel about the BYU tackle. So we are we are um, in in lockstep on that one. So yeah, so I I would I would uh, say no to both of them in the first round. Not our cup of tea, but. Uh, Brandon wants to get our thoughts on why there is no roof on Arrowhead due to Clark not wanting to change too much at Arrowhead. I and I think you're talking about, you know, putting a roof on in this, you know, the reimagined Arrowhead. And there's no doubt. I mean, you know, just when the way asked, you say it every time, you're like the reimagined Arrowhead. I, do <laughs> like I the Willy Wonka 
chocolate factory. I mean, mostly. Okay, I mean, okay. At the result, at the possibility of getting in really trouble here, and and you know, just a little inside baseball. See, of course, um, there is a continual battle in in the world of of, of Arrowhead, because as you know, it has a sponsor's name. And the Chiefs really don't like it when you don't refer to Arrowhead as GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium. And yet I find it very humorous that when they put out all their press campaign for the new stadium and everything like this, they only refer to it as the reimagined Arrowhead and not reimagined, not GEHA Field at the reimagined Arrowhead or reimagined GEH Field at arrowhead and of course the reason before that is is because the reimagined arrowhead will be in 2031 and the geha contract only runs through 2030 so therefore it's not necessarily the reimagined geha field at arrowhead so that's why i i like saying reimagined arrowhead with as much sarcasm as i possibly can and i i don't know if it comes across nick but the fact that you be, seem entertained by my reimagined arrowhead i i like that um I was entertained funny, by the reimagined part. Any of the comments that Matt had that reflect anything else I had no comment <laughs> on. But this takes me back to because uh, I was looking at the election results from from 2006 and and the, the the rolling roof getting defeated then. And I mean, there's been a lot of revisionist history that I don't know how much to really truly believe and what's accurate and everything. There will be some people who will tell you that the rolling roof was put onto the ballot just so that people could vote no against it and feel good about voting for the three eight cents that tax that they could vote for yes for one, but vote no for the other one. Um, there'll be other people who will tell you that, thank God it didn't pass because they had no idea how to build a rolling roof. And that had they managed to put something together that could roll between those two stadiums, they certainly could not do it for like the $200 million that they were asking for. So th that I think is also absolutely part of this too, putting a roof on arrowhead, um, would bump up the cost of this by several hundred million dollars. I mean, nobody's really put a number on it, but I, I mean, I think there's a, if it could be done, if it was, a, if the engineering feat could actually be put, pulled off of putting a roof on a 50 year old stadium, um, it would probably have added about another, I mean, I'm just even guessing here. If you told me it was gonna add another $500 million to the cost, I wouldn't be surprised, and it could be a whole lot more than that. So even though Clark says he loves 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 outdoor football and thinks that football deserves to be played outdoors, I, I think that will change if the Chiefs, you know, end up getting a new stadium. Because I think if they build a new stadium, I think it's going to have a roof, Nick. <laughs> well, and and the only question I have is like, I don't know, like, okay, hypothetically, say you have, say you have the current stadium the way it is. What are you allowed to do? And, and this is me genuinely not knowing because I'm not Nick the Builder, um, <laughs> nor am I Bob the Builder. Um, but I do have a construction hat and a hammer <laughs> that you have seen as a prop on here before. Um, but part of me kind of wonders, is there something code-wise that would change certain things about the stadium if you had to try to put a roof on the current stadium as is? What is there certain codes you have to follow? Also on top of cost, what would the cost be? And how much of it would change what it currently is? So, I mean, whenever you're putting something brand new collectively together and all the codes are going to be in uniform with what everything would be on a brand new stadium, I my guess is that's probably a lot easier to navigate and get through. Um, but whenever you're trying to put something brand new with something that's been around for quite a while, I don't know what all the logistics are and potentially the headaches are of trying to get whatever potential things you would need to get that approved and executed and everything of that nature. Um, and going to our big story of the night, the, we do have updated election results and well, uh, Matt, you're gonna have I'm looking to see about the Kansas City, Missouri ahead. aspect of it. Oh, I accidentally muted Nick again. We now have updated results in Jackson, the Jackson County Election Board for that portion outside of Kansas City, Missouri. No, 60%. Yes, 39%. 
um, and in Kansas City, Missouri, which uh, I am trying to find out. I mean, looking at this is if it is actually final results or not, because um, shows a large number of votes coming in and it doesn't have the breakdown by precincts or anything. Um, but this is showing the no in Kansas City, Missouri. And, and oh, my goodness, where did it go? It disappeared on me. Um, refreshing. No vote in Jackson County. Um, 18,697 votes. Yes, 13,557. I can't do that math quite off my head, but that is a, a deep divide. Um, like I said, I'm looking to see if that is official results, uh, at least final unofficial results. Um, if that's the case, either way, Nick, um, it does not look like this sales tax is passing tonight. Matt, I don't know. I'm not good with numbers and elections and stuff like that. That is not my wheelhouse again, Matt. <laughs> so all I can tell you is I've been thinking about ice cream for a little bit, and I think I'm going to treat myself tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm that's sorry if that doesn't help you in this current situation. That's a, that's certainly my 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 fault there for you. So, um, what did yeah, you that, put ice cream in my head? I put I ice cream ice earlier. cream in your head. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, we we'll see as the night goes on. I mean, that is 14% of the precincts reporting in, um, Jackson County. Um, and that's 5.9% turnout. The only thing that's making me wonder if, if, if Kansas City, Missouri has actually re re delivered and reported, um, their unofficial final results is that they show a turnout on this report, of 14.7 percent which would be a realistic turnout for an april election um so if that's i mean one if this is the final results um you can i think quite comfortably say that this the sales tax has not passed uh the last time like i mentioned at the very beginning of the show um the sales tax yes vote outperformed jackson county so uh, I can't imagine the Jackson County being able to offset this kind of result in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, we'll see. I mean, this could certainly be advance vote. Once again, I mean, it could very well be. Um, so there might be more coming in. I don't see anything official from the Kansas City, Missouri election board about how many results this include, how many votes this includes. If it is the bulk of them, I'll keep looking around here. I'm going to find a question for Nick to answer. Um, while I continue to look at it, but right now, I mean, the preferably it is a not, football question. <laughs> it is not trending in the right direction for the the yes vote, and I mean, I, I don't know if you have any uh, thoughts on it, Nick. But let's just even start there. I mean, if this is the case, if voters have turned down this sales tax, where do we go from here, Matt? That is a great question that we will be talking about all week long. <laughs> That's all I got for you, man. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I mean, you know, I mean, we are going to be talking about it for a while. I mean, it's there's a lot of moving parts to this. I mean, we will see if this is something that um, if the teams want to continue to work with Jackson County on it, or if this is going to be a separation of the of the teams in Jackson County. I mean, there's absolutely something to be said for the argument that Jackson County footing the bill for both these two stadiums maybe is just an impossibility in this day and age. I don't know. I mean, the, the teams have their leases through the 2030 season. So Ooh. there's still time. I like that but, question at 821 from Chris. But uh, if that's what it takes to get Nick a question that he likes, that I can then look up some things for you. Uh, Good from, from Chris. There we go. Nailed it. <laughs> this is my when, wheelhouse. Football when wrestling. will we see the Kelsey brothers involved in WrestleMania? That is a good question because if I remember correctly, it's in Philadelphia this week, and it looks like they may have done their podcast that will debut tomorrow. It looks like it might be potentially in that area. I don't know their schedule, um, but that would be interesting if um, if they do end up having that out there or not. Sorry, there's something else that just popped into my head that I just realized. Okay, so they did, they did announce uh, Kelsey Jam. Okay, yes. Sorry. Yes, you are no longer embargoed on Kelsey Jam. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you knew exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. For, for people that don't know, sometimes you do get information earlier than 
is publicly announced, but you have to agree to embargo. And if you don't follow that embargo, you're definitely not going to get that information in the future. So, um, yeah. So <laughs> thank you, sir. I had to double check on that one. I was like, yep, no, it's out there. We're good. Um, but yeah, I mean, with, uh, that wouldn't be a, uh, anything they can do to put themselves in the news cycle together. Um, that, that wouldn't be a bad thing. So yes, I think with WrestleMania, I mean, I don't even know the card that they got for WrestleMania, but the Kelsey brothers being there actually would be incredibly smart. And with the fans from Philadelphia there as well, that would be intriguing as well. And then with Pat McAfee, a part of the WWE, to a certain extent, I know he does SmackDown hosting. Um, yeah, that would, man, that is interesting. That is actually, I, I enjoy that question, Matt. And that one, that one actually, huh, that like, I, I just kind of wonder what they would do if they're out there. If they did, uh, if they did a run in on one of the wrestlers that was talking terrible about the Philadelphia Eagles or the Kelsey Brothers podcast or the Chiefs and Eagles talking terribly about them or sees the Kelsey Brothers in the front row. And then starts, you know, talking smack to them. Because I remember there was one year when The Rock came out. And I, I think it was The Rock against Triple H. And then they had Ronda Rousey in the crowd who magically came out and, and joined, I want to say, The Rock. And then they went up on the up to the ring. And then they battle royale against uh, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H in a, in a kind of little impromptu thing, if I remember correctly. So that would actually, the Kelsey brothers, I'm just trying to think who you would match them up against that it doesn't already have a card for that night and when i'm talking card for people that don't know for example oh night one of matches cody rhodes and seth rollins versus the rock and roman reigns that uh those are names i actually recognize and i've heard of um even though i don't really watch wrestling anymore and speaking of the harley race thing was coming out tonight on vice tv handsome harley race from kansas city the wrestler it had uh it's gonna have some of his backstories that's gonna be on vice so that's something i gotta figure out how to watch because i don't have that channel on youtube tv I don't recognize any of these other wrestlers other than Rey Mysterio. Let's see. Night two. Ooh, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for night two. Interesting. Then you, oh, and then you got Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kyle Owens. There's another. So Logan Paul, with him being the champion, I wonder if they would have his brother Jake Paul come into the ring so it could give him a nice little, nice little headline grab before his fight with Mike Tyson coming up. So see, you just gotta you gotta think of all this cross promotion that happens with WrestleMania. And like WrestleMania, like it's the as they've said many, many times before, it's the granddaddy of them all when it comes to wrestling. Like when it comes to the two biggest wrestling pay-per-views, it always felt like it was Royal Rumble and who was gonna win the Royal Rumble and then WrestleMania itself. Like those are the two that no matter what people always watched. So Matt, have I stalled enough for you? At this point, you have uh, mm, nailed it. enough. Yeah. I greatly appreciate that. Hey, Matt, that's what I'm here for. And you know, I, I just work out here making dreams work. We we do have more results, and we do have another batch from. So those were not either the final results in in Missouri. We now have thirty percent of the precincts in Jackson County. And with 30% and no still at 60%, yes, just under 40%. Um, that is about eight, well, excuse me, um, the yes vote is performing about 12 points worse than it did in 2006. Coincidentally, over in Kansas City, Missouri, um, no is at 58.8%. So yes, will be at 41.2, which is oddly enough, about 12% worse than it performed the last time around. So um, the remarkable thing about these results, Nick, is that um, the spread between the Jackson County voters and the Kansas City, Missouri voters in Jackson County is almost exactly the same. Kansas City, Missouri um, voted um, more for yes in 2006 than, than Jackson County did by about two points. And they're about two points different this year as well with Kansas City, Missouri, again, having a bit more support. But like I said, there, it's, this, is, this is trailing 12% where those 2006 results were. Um, 
I mean, I am a amateur poll prognosticator. I am not Steve Kornacki. I I wish I were. I have I'm, a, I'm like I said, I'm an amateur Steve Kornacki. I'm like an amateur storm chaser, except I'm an uh, amateur election chaser, Nick. Um, I've seen enough. Um, this is not going to pass tonight. So uh, these two teams. Bold predictions, Matt. Everyone else. I mean, they're going to be going back to the drawing board. Um, certainly things can change, but I just cannot imagine a scenario. And one, I couldn't imagine a scenario where um, this attacks is this far behind in Kansas City, Missouri, being able to offset anything that happens in Jackson County. And Jackson County is they're running in lockstep to where they were 18 years ago, except they're both running 12 points worse. I mean, this is, and I, this is going to be shocking to me because I mean, the polling, the little bit limited polling that we had on this actually had a very close race of about one to two points with yes in favor. I mean, this would indicate to me that either the polling was very, very off um, or all the undecideds broke towards no. And, once again, I mean, I, I would the only thing that would that keeps me from saying that that yes has got a chance is that you could say that maybe the no vote was a lot of the early voting results. Um, right now, it looks like the day of voting is more yes than no. So that's the one thing going in it, but it is definitely not a significant factor. So um, this. Doesn't look good, Nick. I mean, I I I think that uh, come Wednesday morning we're going to be having a conversation about where we go next with these two teams. Oh wow! Tomorrow is Wednesday. Oh boy! Tomorrow is Wednesday. My week is just flying by. For people that don't, right. know, don't know that my uh, off days are on Monday, Tuesday. So Matt just helped me realize yet again that that you have to go to work tomorrow. Well, not necessarily that. I enjoy going to work. It's just <laughs> like I'm like, man, my off days have passed me by pretty quick. See, everybody asks me why I, you know, make you do this, you know, uh, you know, bef- when, you know, when you could be going to the grocery store and, you know, on your, on your, on your day off. And I'm like, you do go to the grocery store on your day off. It's that you do this on your day off. Mm-hmm. See, and you want to hear something fun about the grocery store? Yeah. I did that at noon today just for you. You are a gentleman. And and for a all of you watching. Okay. You I did that so be out of the way. So it wouldn't be rushed because I can tell you right now. Trying to weave through the lanes while after the the stock people have put up all the boxes, it's a journey. It's a it's journey. getting earlier and earlier. So and, it is, a, and I and I do my best to try to avoid it because I'm a rather large man, um, and that it's not not easy for me. I'm not nimble enough, even with a big cart, to be able to sift through some things sometimes i just got to leave my card at the end of the aisle walk down and get what i need and then toss it in there and i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna badmouth anybody because i i I want them to be a sponsor one day but i'm just gonna say when you know you close the deli and the meat counter too early in the night it does cause problems but that's my only my only thing to say uh steam and demon coming back in nick wants you to know jason yes but nfl would have kittens if travis got hurt in the ring yeah, but you're talking about if they actually wrestled. Like you're talking about actual physical confrontation. Like just standing up in a ring and 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 pushing back and forth and talking to each other. That would that would be the equivalent of it. It's not full it's not full on wrestling. What if they wrestled each other? That could get real. Maybe well, too not, real. Not, it's not gonna happen. So <laughs> it wouldn't turn into an actual wrestling match. Maybe you just have Kelsey or one of the Kelsey brothers use a pretend chair and just hit him in the back and then it's done and over with, you know? Well, my question then, Nick, is how, how much longer do we have you for? Um, How many more questions you got? Or, or we can always get more questions. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. There was one up there somewhere. There was something that somebody was asking. I felt bad. Um, Cause I would skip something to get to Chris when you were looking for uh this is everybody's, I know, favorite part of the, the podcast when, and the discussion when I start just scrolling looking I for questions. I don't agree with Aaron Banks when he says the best Nick is a fire up Nick. No, it just means I don't care about the consequences of what I say. <laughs> you're, but you're, you, we haven't had a good rant from you in a while. So, well, and you're a topic that gets me agitated. Okay. Your, your rants are what people tune in for. See, so. Well. 
Well, I've already eaten today, so I'm not as I'm not as hangry as I would be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't oh rem- here you go. Here's a great one because this will give us an opportunity to talk about us going full Mike Ditka. Okay. How far will the Chiefs have to trade up in the first round to get a get a first round great offensive tackle? How far will the Chiefs? Have- All right, so. Matt, I talked about on 41 as a mic, so Greg, you've just told me you haven't listened or watched it, and that hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love it. Each week we do the, you know, why do, uh, here's my first thing. Matt, why do we call it a and a Why don't we call it an A and Q? Why don't we be different than everybody else? <laughs> We're going to give some answers, take some questions, and, you know, just start that cycle all over again, you know? What everybody, we probably should just do is call it a call it a. Let's what we should probably just no, probably and- just do is call it a lightning round, in which case we could answer everybody's questions in, in like an hours. hour and a half. Yeah, <laughs> or to pass an hour and a half. We so. just go out. We just go lightning round at seven. We call it lightning round immediately. <laughs> People are like this is the slowest lightning round I've ever seen. <laughs> Put it to shame. Um. So yeah, no. But to get serious here, and I apologize. Um, with what the Chiefs have available. That like we've talked about before in here, the third round pick that they got for Legereus Sneed, that is what they're gonna have to use to get to that twenty-two. You you start testing where can, you call each team in the twenty and below range, and you're like, hey, where can we hypothetically get to to be able to get a tackle or wide receiver that you want if you think they're gonna fall in that spot? I'm gonna pull up the Rich Hill. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's a Rich Hill trade heart, trade chart. It's not the heart, it's the chart. Um, but it has my heart. Um, so the Chiefs draft capital combined collectively is 344 according to how many points they have according to Rich Hill. So the Chiefs 32nd pick is worth 184 points. Now, the Chiefs third round pick is 40 itself. So I'm not a mathematician. And I don't pretend to be one because I was awful at math and algebra and college algebra. So with the Chiefs third round pick at 95 and their pick at 32, that's 224. So 224 only gets you to Tampa Bay at 26. Green Bay, it actually doesn't get you there because they're at 230. So what you're hoping is a team would want the Tennessee Titans hypothetical third round pick. The, follow, the following year, and people argue about this, and there's actually a new trend coming around right now where people are, are valuing um, future picks differently than they were before. So they're not – people always assume, well, you consider it an end of the third round pick or you consider it a fourth round pick. But there's actually some research that I, I know I've, I've seen on Twitter now that some people are doing the numbers and you actually can kind of take it for more value point than you want. It's just a matter of if a team will do it. So hypothetically – Say the Titans, um, they would be, yeah, they'd be the 71st pick. So say it's 68. So the Titans pick next year, you just assume that they're at the same spot that they were the following year. And they would be, that would be 68 points in the third round. You're now at 252. So 252 gets you right there at 22 with the Eagles. Um, So that is kind of your wheelhouse of what you could potentially do. Now the new now the, now the next question comes in, what NFL teams are going to not want to help play ball? What teams will not play ball with you? The Steelers are at 20. Will they play ball with you? Who knows? Dolphins probably not going to play ball with you. The Eagles would cuz Howie's got a relationship with the Chiefs, but he probably is going to want a little bit extra more than what he would. The Vikings, 50-50, they might they might not but the Vikings may not also have that pick if they trade up for a quarterback since they have 11 and 23. So then that becomes where did the Vikings trade up to and is it with an NFC team? So now we've thrown in, I mean, I don't know, we've thrown in what, five hypotheticals, maybe more at this point. This is why I love these type of questions where we have to factor <laughs> in everything because people don't realize I'm going to draw every single thing on the board each time you ask me a hypothetical. And then you're, <laughs> and you're like, dude, just give me an answer. I'm like, I can't because I got to go through the whole the whole uh, workshop, the whole thing. And then let's see, 24 Cowboys. It depends on what they're going to want. Just like last year when the Chiefs tried to trade up with them and they they said no because they wanted Mozzie Smith. So 
Cowboys potentially would, Packers would, Bucks potentially would. So 24, 25, 26, and, and hypothetically, right? So, yeah, 22 to 26 is all NFC teams right now. So you have a shot at that point. The biggest question would be you're not – it's going to be tough to get to that 17 to 19 range. So it would be a matter of if – is there anything in the future the Chiefs want to throw in on top of what we've already talked about between a first and a hypothetical 2025 20, third? Would the Chiefs want to throw something else additional in hypothetically to get up to that point? So, yeah, it'll uh, – It'll be interesting, but yeah, no, I, I don't think the Chiefs are going to be able to go far to be able to trade up because I mean, like Mims from Georgia, is somebody I would actually end up liking if they could. Oh, look at Matt; he's got a bottom line ticker too that's going to distract me. I'm just going to keep reading, and reading, <laughs> reading. <laughs> I don't. Oops, I actually clicked it off. I'm trying to control the speed of it. I don't reading know how to. And reading, there's so many numbers. My brain already shut off after I saw the the 42. <laughs> Well, just a, a quick interruption to your, your great thoughts there, but um, Kansas City, Missouri now fully in reporting, all precincts reporting in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and yes, as you can see, the stadium result has failed. Well, it is failing, and I can't say failed because you have to combine Jackson County and Kansas City, Missouri. But no in Kansas City, Missouri, 57.8%. No in Jackson County right now is 58.5% with 51% of the precincts reporting. Um, this is, that is all she wrote, um, with Kansas City, Missouri completely in and Jackson County results half in, um, mathematically, basically impossible for the yes vote to pull this one out. And so we will be going to plan B, Nick. Well, Matt, since you put us on a negative note, I want to bring us back to a positive note. Go for it. Uh, my question is, guys, what type of ice cream should I get tonight? And I'm going to look at the comment section until I see the faithful that are still watching and listening and not distracted by the by the bottom line ticker as they read across. I have some questions about the ice cream. Go for it. Where are we going? Are we going to a an, a are we going to Baskin Robbins? Are we going to Andy's? Are we going to the grocery store? What are we going? Dairy Queen, my dude. Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. Okay, Dairy Queen. Okay. I gotta get some I gotta get some shrimp cocktail sauce. I'm missing that for my shrimp. I'll boil it a little bit earlier. Or I got um, I got boiled shrimp earlier. I and mean I, I realized my shrimp cocktail sauce is gone. <laughs> I mean, I'm I can't I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, if I go to Dairy Queen, I'm going blizzard. Mm-hmm. So, so far, I'm, all I've gotten is Rocky Road and chocolate chip here. I mean, I'm going Blizzard, but and and they they do have a they have a pe- chocolate peanut butter Blizzard. Um, mm-hmm. I can't remember which one it is that right now that they've got, but there there's yeah. some. I mean, and they you can never go wrong with that. All right, um, now CSH here has hot fudge Sunday. Here is my old person complaint about hot fudge Sundays: you melt half your ice cream immediately, and if you're driving home with it, if you're not eating it right there. You paid for half of you paid for half you paid for ice cream soup. See you paid the drive the driving home is a key part of it. That's why I go Blizzard and I mean I, my go to in that situation is chocolate ice cream with peanut butter cups. That's just me. But I mean if 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 and, and I will do this even if I'm driving, Nick. I will do it. I will go with a chocolate dipped cone because matt we are being overwhelmed right now and i gotta do a lightning round here i apologize because i'm looking at the comment section the trail <laughs> phenomenal with the cookies and cream my the pistachio flavor outstanding i salute you sean i do not get my cocktail sauce at dq but price chopper is right behind it don't tell ivy i went there um <laughs> it's it. butter pecan another good one my is bring in the heat bring in the heat I admit I'm not a pistachio guy, so that would not be my recommendation. But I don't know if Omar's trying to insult us or not. It sounds like he's trying to insult us. Avocado ice cream? Are mm-hmm. you saying? Are is, is Omar trying to say we need to be losing weight? That's how I took it. That's how I took I mean, it from Omar. That's just that's just not polite, Omar. It's I mean, hurtful. It is hurtful. I mean, Matt gave you a, a bottom line ticker that gave you the results instantaneously. <laughs> And this is how you repay him. Well, we, you've, I mean, do you have a winning selection yet, or are we going to have to wait till, till later to get the, the results of the win? You'll get the results on my Twitter account when I post a photo. <laughs> 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 Gives you something to look forward to. 
All right, then, lightning round. Oh, since we called Omar out, now he's like, oh, it's all love now. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it. That's what, here, here, you want a little rant right now? And it's not, and Omar, it's not about you. It's just in general. Dude, that, I've had that before. That thing is overwhelming. It's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> the peanut butter pie blizzard? Mm, it's a, it's a it lot is, of chocolate. It's a winner. I mean, Cody has just won the thread for me, so. <laughs> but, no, it is It is funny sometimes, like, when, when people, they'll throw something out there. And then, like, once you recognize it or acknowledge it, and they're like, I was just kidding. I was like, well, you weren't going to say that otherwise <laughs> if nobody brought attention to it. Well, when I was getting ready to go lightning round, I was going to go with the question, the first question of, uh, if I can find it, Nick's all-time favorite WWF wrestler. Oh, that one's easy. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, that's easy. Stone Cold oh. Steve Austin. And I love the NWO Wolfpack back in the day in WCW. Did not like the regular NWO, but really big fan of the Wolfpack. I loved Goldberg's entrance back in the day when he would come out there. I did like Diamond Dallas Page from WCW. But if I had to pick my top five WWF wrestlers when I was watching during the Attitude Era when I was a kid, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I really liked Ahmed Johnson. I just, I, I mean, I know that sounds weird, but I was a big fan of his. I did like the Legion of Doom as a tag team. Obviously loved Degeneration X because they were edgy at the time. But actually, one of my all-time favorites was Shawn Michaels. Just the HBK, the Heartbreak Kid, the Sweet Chin music. Um, that was actually, he was my all time favorite. Then Stone Cold came along around WrestleMania 13. And then that's whenever, you know, that was big in middle school. Like you saw Stone Cold Steve Austin t shirts everywhere, then Degeneration X t shirts and NWO t shirts. And it was funny because teachers had no idea what any of that stuff meant. And wrestling was huge back then because, like, you didn't, you, UFC wasn't big at the time. And so, like, WWF at the time, before they became WWE because the lawsuit and everything. Um, with the World Wildlife Fund. <laughs> Still pretty uh, hilarious, by the way. Yeah. But no, like, yeah, yeah Wrestler, I remember. Wrestlers that. lost to a bunch of pandas. Coolest thing I ever saw in person was watching The Undertaker. And it was an in, in, in your house. It was an in your house. It was just a show event. It wasn't the in your house pay-per-view, but it was just a, you know, show event that wasn't televised. And watching um, The Undertaker walk across the top rope and have the nimbleness and balance that he did before he would before he would you know throw the fist down and everything one of the most impressive athletic feats i would ever i i ever saw in person i'm trying to update my banner because we do have more results they do not change the situation actually give me the next question then you got you got two you either got you got the one where somebody asked me about football at seven forty nine, and then you got a one, uh, a one at eight fifty four. Whichever one's going to be quicker for me to stall for you. Uh, all I heard last was eight fifty four. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, going with the low hanging fruit. <laughs> and now all my comments have disappeared. So <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, what happened to my comments? So, A1 Bud, I will answer for you as Matt figures out how to unmute his comment section or whatever <laughs> you may have done to it. Um, A1 asks, Nick, you like The Rock final boss character, WrestleMania predictions. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the final boss character is. I don't know if that's what he's currently playing right now. I saw the promo the other night when we had it on a TV with him with, uh, with Rhodes, so... If that's what you're talking about, I mean, look, I mean, he, The Rock is one of the most charismatic wrestlers that you're gonna you're gonna find in terms of <laughs> he was before, but with the acting, with doing Hollywood acting as much as he has and being in movies and everything, he actually he's all he's really convincing these days and some of the stuff he does, man. And he he did not break character during that promo shoot from uh, SmackDown the other night. Again, I want to emphasize I do not watch wrestling, but we we literally have 12 TVs on at the station, so you do catch a lot of you know, you catch a lot of stuff cuz like I I had we had there was at one point during I don't remember what day it was, we had the Royals game on, two NCAA tournament games. We had all the local stations on and then um something else, man. It was there was NFL Network maybe. I think they had Big 12 uh Big 12 at that time. But there was a, there was a lot going on, Matt. A lot going on. Matt, have I stalled enough for you? 
You have. I am now more or less back to to existence here. I am now going to see if I am swift enough to be able to pull something off here. Um, Because everybody knows if you you, I know that the hardcore fans of this know that every time I start trying to share screens, it gets interesting. And and for you, for Kathleen, she's asking about Hulk Hogan. You got to remember, he was already in WCW whenever I started watching wrestling. So like I I wasn't the Hulkamania era and all that type of stuff. I really wasn't a big part of like in terms of watching because I my cousin, my cousin Martin is actually the one who got me into it back in like 90. 94, 95. So at that point, WCW was already in full swing. And so you and my cousin was watching WWE. So that's what we did at that time. Well, I'm going to lose lots of cool points by saying that I have not watched wrestling in a long, long time. Well, Matt, so, maybe you watch WrestleMania this weekend and we'll see if the Kelsey brothers show up. I mean, How about that? I, well, last time I, I, I watched, I mean, Hulk Hogan was a thing. So there's that. Um, this is a statement from Mayor Quentin Lucas. The people of Kansas City and Jackson County love the Chiefs and Royals. Today, they rejected plans and processes they found inadequate. Over the months ahead, I look forward to working with the Chiefs and Royals to build a stronger, more open and collaborative process that will ensure the teams, their events and investments remain in Kansas City for generations to come. So um, the mayor was a late endorser of the uh, uh, effort, but did come around to it over the weekend and endorsed the process. But uh, now at least has been amongst the first to throw in the concession that the the it has gone to defeat. So. And that's an unnecessary oh, wow. zoom. That was yeah, an unnecessary zoom. Show, so. Let's show that much of my face. It's going to take that was, Neither one of us needed. That's how you lose viewers, Matt. Neither neither one of us needed to see that. Um, so, uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, well, I, I see a lot more wrestling talk here, man. Everybody's, everybody's on board with the wrestling. See, Matt? That's what we do, man. We, we bring people together. <laughs> <laughs> A, qu- a quick comment here from John. I see with this vote failed, we could lose the Chiefs and Royals. This opens Pandora's box and allows Clark Hunt and John Sherman to take bids from other cities. This is a big deal. Um, the one protection that Kansas City does have is that these teams do have at least through 2030. And I mean, let's be realistic. The Royals are obviously a, a much bigger risk of relocation than the Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs are not going anywhere. They could move into Metro. Absolutely. Um, I mean, everything that I have seen, and I'm, I say this as a Chiefs reporter and a Royals fan only, not as a Royals reporter, but everything I have seen certainly suggests that, that, that John Sherman and Brooks and their family want to keep the Royals in Kansas City. So I would imagine that their first option would be to continue to be somewhere in Kansas City. That just does not mean it will be Jackson County. It could be a, it could be in Kansas City, Missouri. It could be North Kansas City. It could be Overland Park for all I know. It could be Gardner, Kansas for all I know. Um, but I'm fairly confident that their first option would still be to remain in the metro. We'll see what happens. But um, it's a pretty big night, Nick. You know what else is big? Wrestling. One of, ice sch- cream. one of my scheduled tweets just popped up that I forgot about for our podcast. <laughs> we'll see. There you go, Matt, folks. retweet you... it. Everybody, everybody listening right now, retweet it, please. If you have not listened to the podcast from Sunday on Tackles, you should go do that now uh, because you need to get it in because, of course, we'll be back on your feet on Sunday and we're going to be talking about defensive tackles. Yeah, here's here's what I'll, I'll even uh, – I'll leave them with this for the dedicated people that stuck around for almost two hours now um, <laughs> before I get my ice cream, which I do need to go get soon. Luckily, you're lucky Mega Millions uh, lost lost the, the interest because uh, I would I would have already left 30 minutes ago to, to go and invest in my 401k plan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not to blame this week for you. Not yeah, you're not Mega to blame. Millions? You were okay. last week. Though, it was right? last week. Was, yes. was it last, or the week before? I don't remember, but it was one of the weeks. We were right up against the deadline, and um, I chose you guys over uh, potentially getting rich. And um, I just want you to know the sacrifice I made for you. For my one in a billion chance. <laughs> That's the kind of dedication that it has here, folks. Uh, uh, let's draw. DQ closes at 10. So I got time. But I don't like to be that person that shows up in line 15 minutes before a place is going to close. Because I, I totally would expect them to, you know, not be a fan of mine 
for making them, you know, whenever they're ready to start cleaning up and closing. So that's why I like to get somewhere before nine 30, at least 30 minutes before it closes. Cause I've seen the movie waiting before and that always pops in my head. So I don't want to do that to anybody that works in, you know, in the food service industry. And I appreciate every single person that does. Cause I, uh, I get a lot of food to go over the years. So thank you. Um, but what I will do, Matt, and what I will throw out here, the, uh, the question I have now going forward with uh, once the, uh, the election results are officially final and everything of that nature, um, will the, if the Chiefs will want to do their own thing and be on, the own, uh, on their own ballot and not necessarily have a joint thing with the Royals, because I, I personally, you know, I personally believe that if the Chiefs had their own own thing, I think that I think it goes differently for them. Um, I just think that there was a trying to sell the Royals downtown ballpark and the Chiefs together. I just, I always kind of was like, boy, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because there's, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of frustration towards the Royals and not investing in the team. And I don't think that if this was coming off the World Series, a couple years off a of World Series, then maybe so. But I mean, look, I mean, the reality is this the Chiefs are king in this town. They have been, and they're going to continue to be. And as long as they have Patrick Mahomes and they keep having the success that they have with Andy Reid, Brett Beach, Patrick Mahomes combined, like I think fans are going to be very receptive to giving them what they want. <clears throat> but Royals and Chiefs together, I just always felt like it was going to be, it was going to be tough to be able to, to give them both what they potentially could want. Well, in an odd coincidence now, I mean, we're close to getting, uh, we're at 81% of the precincts in Jackson County, 100% in Kansas City, Missouri. Oddly enough, right now, um, both at 57.8% no. I mean, absolutely identical results. So um, can't really say this was a Jackson County, Kansas City, Missouri thing. It was uh, Matt, universal. Check the, back, check the bottom of the comment section. Cody helped <laughs> us out. He was our Sherpa on this journey of what it means. Thank you, Cody. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you, Cody. <laughs> there you go. You have done a great service for me. All right. Well, we need to get Nick to Dairy Queen. I need to take a, a little boy's break. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we will sign it off here. Matt, we have the election like, results in. You just say you're leaving, man. I've told you this. You don't have to tell people. Oh. thank you all for joining us uh, we'll be back on sunday of course on your feed with 41 is the mic where we'll be breaking down the defensive tackle class um mm -hmm. if the chiefs do anything else dramatic this week it will be in your feed i hope at least i'll be on your feed somewhere on the youtube yeah, um, no, as no, always no if we me. i got a job we, okay? i know and if, <laughs> but if we didn't get your question in feel free to fire it up on the youtube channel and we'll try to answer it in the comments section so unless you have anything else nick all right, I'll do the trademark even on this one just for you, Matt. All right, just let's do you. it. Till next time, I bid you adieu. <laughs>